Greetings. This episode relates the voyage of Sir Humphrey Gilbert to Newfoundland. Uh, Sir Humphrey Gilbert departed New England for Newfoundland on June 11, 1583. This was his second try to find the fabled Northwest Passage. Sir Humphrey Gil Gilbert departed New England with five ships. Sir Humphrey Gilbert lived from about sometime in 1539 until September the 9th, 1583. Otto Gilbert and Catherine Chaperone Gilbert birthed their second son on Greenway Estate of the River Dart in Devon, England. Otho died in 1547 when Humphrey was eight. Catherine married Walter Lott Riley. The two would have three children. One of these, Walter, would grow up to become the famous Sir Walter Raleigh. Thus, Humphrey and Sir Walter Raleigh were half-brothers. Gilbert learned military science and the navigational arts at Oxford. He joined the British Army and participated in the, in the siege of, of Le Havre on the French coast where he was wounded. He became interested in finding the Northwest Passage and by 1666 wrote the Discourse of a Discovery for a New Passage to Katia, which is China, in which he urged Queen Elizabeth to seek the passage. She demurred. In the years after, Gilbert had ruthlessly suppressed the Desmond rebellions. Lord Deputy Sir Henry Sidney knighted him in 1570. He gained election as to Parliament in 1571. He never gave up his efforts to launch an expedition to China via the Northwest Passage and persisted in his efforts with the Queen. Finally, in 1578, she granted him his letters patent, which gave him the right to found a colony in America. He managed to assemble a large fleet that departed Dartmouth on September the 26th, 1578. Storms arose, scattering his fleet and forcing him to return to England to take refuge. The letters patent granted him by Queen Elizabeth granted him the right to found a colony in America, but the six-year term was on the verge of expiring in 1583. Humphrey managed to assemble another fleet of five ships. He departed on June the 11th, 1583, with the intention of founding a colony on Newfoundland and seizing the fishing grounds of, of Spain, Portugal, and France. Humphrey Gilbert had departed England for a second attempt to establish an English colony in North America. His five ships, the Delight was 120 ton, the Bark Raleigh, 200 ton, the Golden Hind, 40 tons, the Swallow, 40 tons, and the Squirrel, 8 or 10 tons. It left port on June the 11th, 1583, bound for the fishing waters of Newfoundland. The Icelandic explorer Leif Erikson was the first European to visit Newfoundland in the 11th century. He called the land Vinland because of the abundance of grapevines growing there. The coastal waters off the Newfoundland shore, called the Grand Banks, are ideally suited for fish. The shallow waters from 80 to 330 feet deep allow waters from the lower levels to rise, mixing nutrients into the water. These nutrients produce a food rich for many different kinds of fish and other sea creatures. The waters abound with Atlantic cod, swordfish, haddock, and capelli. The shellfish include scallop and lobster. During the 16th century, various Portuguese, Spanish, French, and English fishermen visited this rich food supply to take advantage of the excellent fishing. Gilbert had intended to found a permanent colony in the harbor and issue licenses to these fishermen for which they would pay a fee. The fishermen did not maintain permanent presence in the harbor, having only fishing shacks and racks on which to dry their catches. Soon after the ex expedition left England, the bark Raleigh developed problems and had to return. The ships proceeded slowly to their destination, at times enveloped in dense fog. The fleet re reached Newfoundland Harbor on August, August the 3rd, 1583. An English admiral in charge of the fishing fleet had assembled a fleet of 36 ships. The captain of one of Gilbert's ships, the Delight's master Richard Clark, had committed an act of piracy in 1582 against some Portuguese ships. Gilbert resolved the issue by displaying his patent letter granted by the Queen, taking two days to settle the dispute. Finally, on August 5, 1583, Gilbert claimed the area around Newfoundland for the English crown. The ceremonies consisted of the assembled fishermen cutting a section of the turf and a rod from the area presenting them to Gilbert. This conferred title of the land to Gilbert, who then took possession of the, in the name of England. Gilbert had planted the seeds for the first permanent English settlement in North America. Sir Humphrey Gilbert had departed England to found a colony 
on his second attempt on June, uh, he left on June the 11th, 1583. The expedition consisted of five ships, had reached Newfoundland on August the 3rd, 1583. Gilbert landed on Newfoundland and claimed it for New England. Gilbert and his crew spent the next several days exploring the area and establishing control over the fishermen that used the rich fishery in the waters off the coast. The crews erected, erected a formal marker, marker at St. John's consisting of a wooden pillar with a lead, leaden royal coat of arms. The laws he instituted included the strict observance of the Church of England and granting cod drying areas to certain fishermen. Of course, enforcing the laws required a permanent presence. While exploring the area, Gilbert's exploration teams discovered iron ore, and an ore of their mineral expert said silver an expert said was silver ore. Gilbert departed several of the shallower inlet, explored several of the shallower inlets and rivers with the squirrel, a small ship with a shallow draft. Many of his men were sick and wanted to return to England. Gilbert had many of them placed on the ship, the Swallow. The Swallow thus returned to England with many of these men, which included the captains of the Delight and the Squirrel. Gilbert had wanted to establish his colony on Newfoundland, but others and the crew wanted to explore further down the coast to claim more islands before Gilbert's patent expired the following year. Thus, on August the 20th, Gilbert took the Squirrel and the Delight on a voyage down the coast to explore further. The Delight was the largest of the ships in this fleet and contained most of the expedition's supplies. It was an unfortunate choice to explore uncharted coastal waters. A Portuguese fisherman, familiar with the waters, had recommended a course for them to follow. He told them the wild pigs and cattle were on Sable Island. The animals could serve as an additional food source. The voyage proceeded smoothly until August the 28th. After quarreling about a course change, the ships encountered windy weather during the night of August the 28th. The crew of the Delight did not keep a good lookout, thus the next morning the, de the Delight grounded in shallow water. The ship broke up on the rocks, but over 100 crew members died. Gilbert's crew managed to rescue 15 men. Many of Gilbert's records and ore samples went down with the ship. The squirrel returned to their starting point. Sir Humphrey Gilbert and his explorers made the decision to abandon their efforts and plant a colony to plant a colony on Newfoundland after the loss of the Delight. The ships encountered had contained much of their supplies, leaving the potential colonists without many of the critical things they needed. The small fleet had left Newfoundland on August the 31st, 1583. By September the 3rd, the ships had lost sight of land. For several days, the ships made good time, having good weather. Gilbert had insisted on sailing on the Squirrel, his favorite ship. The ship was the smallest and the fastest, but it was overloaded and unsafe. Twice, Gilbert had left the squirrel to go to the Golden Hind, once because he had stepped on a nail and needed the foot bandaged. While on board the Golden Hind, Gilbert and William Cox, the captain of the Hind, debated, debated methods of keeping the ships together. During the discussion, Cox and the others insisted that Gilbert remain on the Hind. Gilbert rebuffed their appeals. Gilbert had returned to the Hind for a couple of days for more discussions about their progress. They encountered a storm during which the squirrel had struggled in the heavy seas. Again, Gilbert rebuffed, that, rebuffed efforts to get it to remain on the larger ship. On September the 9th, 1583, the ships encountered heavy seas with towering waves. Cox could see Gilbert sitting in the stern of the ship, reading a book. The crew of the cry, the crew of the cry, Hind, heard him cry out, We are as near to heaven by sea as by land. After crying out the words, he raised his hand to the sky indicating the leaden gray sky and turbulent wind. Just before midnight, the lights on the squirrel disappeared from view. The squirrel had sunk with all aboard perishing. The hind reached Falmouth, England on September the 22nd. Gilbert's half-brother, Sir Walter Riley, would receive the reissued patents the next year. Walter, Sir Walter Riley would use them to found the ill-fated Roanoke colony, which I will discuss in the next episode. Find out more about colonial history of the United States by purchasing the book Colonial American History Stories 1215 through 1664. The book is a timeline of events from Christopher Columbus to 1664. It is part of a larger series of 12 books, the Timeline of the United States History Series. The history at this time takes the reader up to the opening year of the Revolutionary War, 1775. I am currently writing 1776. You can find the books on my website, www.mossyfeetbooks.com. 
There are links to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Google Play, and other online booksellers. You may choose to purchase the book in ebooks or softbound versions. An audiobook version is available on Google Play. At the conclusion of this series, I will compile the episodes into an audiobook. The audiobook will be available on Audible, Amazon, Apple, Barnes & Noble, as well as many other audiobook sellers. You can find this podcast on Apple, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, TuneIn, and many other podcast platforms. I publish a video version on YouTube and Rumble. You can also order the books directly from me, the author, on the webpage. If you wish me to sign a book, just send an email to mossyfeetbooks at gmail.com requesting a signed book and instructions on how you want me to address it. Note, if you send me an email, I will add you to my contact list. Readers on the list will receive an email from me announcing when I publish a new book. If you do not want me to want me to add you to the list, tell me and I will not add you. Listeners to this podcast that want email notifications of my releases can just send me an email requesting addition to the list. You can choose to have your name removed at any time. If you browse the website, you will find dozens of sample chapters, one for each of my books. I hope you enjoyed this podcast and 